Now, I'm going to give you the next question based on an experiment that I'm going to do uh, that's going to be the basis of several of the other things I'm going to say after this. And the experiment is the following. <clears throat> I'm going to throw a ball straight up, okay, except I'm going to launch it from a cart, and the cart's going to be here. Uh, I want you to predict the results of the experiment if the cart moves horizontally during the launch. So first, <clears throat> let you read that question. So I've got this cart, which is arranged on this track, and the cart is going to move horizontally, and then I have in here a tiny ping pong ball, and my, my launcher, and I've got a spring in this ball, okay. in, this, uh, in this cart, and I've got a, um, um, I'm going to load the spring this way, okay, and then if I bring, I've got a photoelectric device here, so when the photoelectric device comes to this trigger point, the ball is going to launch up, okay, straight up. So when it's straight up, it's straight down, that's vertical motion, okay. But what I'm going to do, is I'm going to repeat that experiment, but this time, I'm going to have the cart moving, all right. So what I want you to predict is the results of the experiment that I will do. Namely, when I launch the ball straight up from the moving cart, which one of these things will happen? Ready? And then we'll do it. Okay, so I'll just look at your answers, but I won't tell you if it's right or wrong. Most of you, wow, uh, say that the ball will fall straight back in the cart. Well, it won't be left behind, huh? Okay. All right, so here we go. And it was nicely launching, okay. In fact, there's a, there's a tunnel that the cart will go through, right? Okay, we're ready again. Silly me. Okay. All right, so it caught exactly. <clears throat> okay. All right. So it caught exactly. <clears throat> uh, so now what was happening there is in fact a very fundamental law which has this fancy name attached to it, which Einstein's theory has attached to it also, and that is called relativity. Okay? Uh, the relativity theory is, um, the, the idea here is that what's happening what you may perceive as what's happening depends on your uh, frame of reference, okay? Or point, I would like to say point of view, but the point of view is a little bit too uh, loose, okay? Because I could go from this point of view and I could see something, and I could go from this point of view and I could see something, and they're both equivalent, but and, and as a painter, I could paint these two different points of view, but they're still different representations of reality, right, which reality is the same. Now, the idea of, po the, the reason I didn't like the word point of view is because point of view only captures the idea that you are looking at the phenomenon or the object from different points in space, okay? And what I'm going to show you is an equivalence that's beyond that, okay? It's an equivalence that's it's applied to not looking at the behavior from different points of view, but looking at the behavior from different frames of reference. Now, a frame of reference is something like an object that's standing still, or a cart that's moving forward with a constant velocity, or a ship that's moving forward with constant velocity. And so now I'm going to need your help. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to be a ship, okay, that's going to move forward with, with constant velocity. Not yet, I'll tell you when, okay. <clears throat> And uh, he's going to be the, the, the wind that propels me, all right? And I'm going to have this ball, and here's, uh, here's the frame of reference, okay? And this is x, y, z. x is that way, z is this way, y is that way. And I'm going to first stand still as this frame of reference, and I'm going to throw the ball up. And what you're supposed to look for is what is the path of the ball, you know, and describe me, to me the path of the ball, okay? So, obviously, and I will describe the path of the ball, okay? So everybody, tell me, uh, I'll give you two choices. Up, down, or parabola. 
what is, the, what is the ball doing? Of course, if we throw it this way, it's a parabola, right? The ball going up, down, or it's a parabola? Up, down, okay. So for me, I'm going to describe the motion of the ball. Sorry. <laughs> up, down. Up, down, up, down. We agree, okay? All right, are you ready? I'm not going to change my frame of reference. I'm going to get on a train, or on a boat, right? And he's, just, can you come forward so I can uh, stand, lean on you a little bit? Okay. All right, thank you, so I don't fall off. Okay, good. Now he's going to change my frame of reference, right? And I'm going to launch the ball when I'm moving. Okay, you can start moving me. Go ahead, faster, 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 faster. Let go. What did you see? What did you see? Do it again. You saw parabola? I saw up down. Do it again. All right. That's a little faster. Go ahead. Wait, stop. Okay, what did you guys see? Parabola. Parabola. I, I saw up down. So which is correct? For me, up down is correct. For you, parabola is correct. Yeah. The correct answer is both are correct. Okay? But they're not the same. Just like the different points of view from different places uh, for an artist are not the same. Similarly, what people observe from different frames of reference are not the same. But they are both correct. Right? So this is a very profound, and this is what I mean by relativity, namely what you see is correct is relative to your frame of reference. Okay? So this picture here just shows you exactly the experiment that I did. Namely, this guy uh, thinks that the ball is moving up and down, and this guy thinks that the ball is moving in a parabola, whether the ship is moving, only when the ship is moving, it thinks it's a parabola. But even if the ship is moving, this guy on the ship still says it, it's moving up and down. Okay? So the path of the ball is up and down always. So what, what, what we're trying to say here is that something even more profound is that the laws of physics, just like I showed you that the laws of physics, uh, like these equations of motion, do not, sounds pretty, Tame. Sounds pretty obvious, okay? However, now I'm going to jump to the next level. All laws of physics are invariant in reference frames moving at constant speed relative to each other. And this is the big jump, okay, when I say all laws of physics. Because now, suppose instead of pouring a glass of wine, I pull out my, my uh, what do you call this thing? DVD play, uh, my CD player. I pull out my CD player and I start playing my favorite Whitney Houston song, right? <laughs> and does the Whitney Houston go, ee, different, or, or is she the same? Sound the same. She sounds the same, right? But when you play the CD, what technologies are you using? You know, you call this a laser, you know, the laser beam reads the, the, the tracks on the CD, yeah? And then it converts that, uh, and in order to spin the CD, you use electricity from a battery, so you're using electricity and magnetism when you're playing the CD. So that means that the laws of electricity and magnetism are involved in, in, in uh, uh, playing your radio or playing your CD. And since the CD sounds the same to you, whether you're moving at 500 miles per hour or whether you're standing still at rest, it means that whatever the physics is that determines the operation of the CD, the laws of those physics are the same in the two vessels, okay, whether they're addressed or whether they're not addressed. And these laws are laws of electricity and magnetism, okay, or, or light and lasers, electricity, magnetism, lasers, all of these laws are in the operation of the CD player, right? the battery, the motor, the laser, and so on. And what we're saying now is that these laws are invariant, which means that the laws of electricity and magnetism must be the same. Now, now comes the new part, which is that there is one law that comes out of the electricity and magnetism. Namely, when you study electricity and when you study magnetism and you determine all the laws, you come up with a new law. And this was a law that was discovered by Maxwell. Okay? Okay, he worked with electricity, he worked with magnetism, he put the two together and he said, light is actually electromagnetism. And I can calculate that from the laws of electricity and magnetism, 
This, the light should always move at a constant speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's the speed of light. He calculated the speed at which light travels. Okay? So this number, the speed of light, is this 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, is a consequence of the laws of electricity and magnetism. It's a law. Okay? It comes out. But now accept that. Accept that this speed of light, is this number, is a law. Now consider... Okay, Maxwell studied that. Now consider the following paradox, which is the heart of the discovery of Einstein's theory. Okay? And the paradox is as follows. Uh, I will ask you again to, to help me, <laughs> but, but, but not, not, not yet. Okay? <laughs> not yet. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw this ball at a certain speed. Right? Do you want to catch it? <laughs> okay, catch it. All right, good. And then... After he has launched me, I'm going to throw the ball again. Okay. And you tell me if the ball came faster or not. All right? Okay, so, so hold. Yeah. All right. Okay, good. Launch me fast. Okay, no. <laughs> not fast enough. Did, did you push? <laughs> Don't push. Okay, all right. Okay, I, I obviously... <laughs> I, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, you didn't break anything. <laughs> I obviously didn't launch it very well, or not necessarily launching at the same speed. But you know the experiment I'm trying to do, right? I'm trying to launch this ball. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to launch this ball when I'm at rest. And then I'm running, running, and then launching the ball, right? Which one's going to be faster? When I'm running, right? Because that's, anybody play cricket here? Cricket? You know, this is a British game. Right? See, the baseball guys, they stand still, and they wind up, and they throw it, right? But the cricketers, when they launch the ball, they run, you know, like that, and then they throw the ball very fast. Okay. <laughs> their, their speeds are comparable to the speeds of baseballs, but they, they still run. Anyway, the speed when you run and launch the ball is the speed of the ball plus the speed at which you are moving. Okay? V plus U. All right. Everybody accept that? Okay. Now let me do the same experiment, okay? Let me launch this laser beam. All right. Now let me run and launch the laser beam. Is the laser beam going any faster? Why not? No, it's because it's the law of electricity and magnetism. Right? We haven't come to relativity yet, but you're in the right direction. So the point is that even when I'm running and I launch the laser light, the laser light still moves at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, so here you go. The guy is standing still and he's launching this flashlight at speed C. And if he's running, the speed of the light will not be U plus V, U plus C. It will be C. All right? And Einstein realized that this is a problem. This is a paradox. Because how can you have, you know, ball, speeds of balls add up, but the speed of laser light doesn't add up? Because the speed of laser light is a law of physics, it's a law of electricity and magnetism. You can't add it up. So then he said, what's the solution to this paradox? Okay, the classical dynamics and electrodynamics, electricity and magnetism, give different answers. What is the correct approach to resolving this paradox? And the resolution of the paradox comes from the fact that you're again looking at this asymmetry between the laws of dynamics and the laws of electricity and magnetism. You're looking at this asymmetry. And here again, just like Galileo saw this asymmetry between ball falling down, ball going up, and the ball going in a straight direction, from that asymmetry he came up with the law of inertia. Einstein resolved this paradox by saying that the correct answer is C, and the reason the correct answer is C is because once you get on that track, your clock changes and your ruler changes. And when you change your clock and your ruler, you come out with the answer C. That's a big jump, right? That to say that I'm going to allow space to change and time to change in order for the answer to come out C. Now that's relativity. Okay, so now who's right? Is, you'll have a different clock. Your clock will read a different time, and my clock will read a different time. Whose time is right? Both times are right. Just like both uh, trajectories of the up-down motion of the ball and the parabolic motion of the ball, both trajectories are correct. Similarly, if I synchronize my watch with yours, 
I get on my spaceship and I take a trip to Jupiter and I come back, my watch will be reading totally different from your watch. And it will still be right. Okay? We're both right. In fact, I will be a little bit younger than you. Sorry, not that much. <laughs> I have I to travel a lot. But if you two who are the same age are actually synchronize your watches and you travel for five years, she'll grow five years, you'll grow about maybe, depends on how fast you travel, you might grow maybe one year. Okay, so you'll come back one year older, you'll, old, you'll age five years during that time. So it's, it's really, it's true. And I'll do this next time, but a lot of people say, you know, yeah, relativity is fun, and the consequences are mind-bending, but we don't really experience them because we never travel fast enough, right? And the answer is, you're, it's not true. We do travel fast enough, and relativity does make a difference to our everyday lives, because when you use, how many people have used the GPS system? Okay, all of you guys have used relativity, because the GPS system works based on the laws of relativity. If the relativity laws are not applied, the GPS system fails. Okay, so, so we'll do that next time. That's it. <clears throat>